Now we move on to the surface data structure. It's very analogous to the curve, but we have, a, instead of a single degree, we have a degree in the u direction and a degree in the v direction. So a surface is really controlled by a rectangular grid of control points. A surface is essentially a mapping from a flat rectangular space onto a three-dimensional space. So for each u and v value of the parameter, there's a function that gives you a 3D point on the surface, starting from the u min up to the u max in the u direction starting from the V minimum up to the V maximum in the V direction. We still have weights, and this is instead of a list of numbers, it's a list of lists. The control points is a list of lists instead of a simple list. The U not vector is a list of numbers for the parameter values in the U direction that represent knots. The V not vectors is the same thing, a list of V parameter values in the V direction. So here's a sample, and we're starting with hard-coded control points, evaluated list for everyone. And then we have a child object, which is the actual B spline surface. As the control points, we simply pass down the control points. So this is what it looks like. As part of the display controls, we're telling it also to display Bezier points. So you see all the control points, and most of them are sitting off the surface. And the same thing holds true for a Bezier surface. If you take the vector, for example, from this end to this next control point right here, that vector will be tangent to the surface at the point where it starts from. In similar ways as how we probed the curve object, we can probe the surface. So the control points comes back as a list of lists. See, it begins with two parentheses here. It's a list of lists. There's the end of the first one, the end of the second, the end of the third, and finally the end of all the lists. The u not vector is a list of parameter values. That's called the uniform not vector. It's all zeros and ones. It starts with the u min and then has the u max and with nothing in between. So that's the default not vector. That means that it's a uniform parameterization. And the weights, again, are all defaults. They're all 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and so on. The degree is 3 in both directions. And we can ask for its area. We could ask for its u min. Its u max will be 1.0. v min, v max, similarly. We could ask for a surface normal. So that's a perpendicular vector pointing up off of that surface at a particular u and v parameter value. So we have to specify two parameters for the normal function, the u and the v. We can also ask it for its iso curves. The iso curves are curves that lie exactly along the surface in one direction. So you have curves lying in the u direction and curves that are lying in the v direction. Each one of those are called isocurves and Gendel contains a sequence of u isocurves and a sequence of v isocurves for a surface. Those are what get displayed by default in the wireframe output. But you can also ask for those isocurves and work with them. Now we want to change the simple surface to contain a sequence of four children and we're going to give each one a different degree just to see how that affects it. curves and surfaces, and even solids, get their position, shape, and dimensions directly from the global control points. They do not respect the reference box from base object. So there is still a reference box there around them, but unless you specify a length, width, and height, and an orientation for that reference box, the, cur the curves, surfaces, and solids will not necessarily respect that reference box. So to transform curves and surfaces in the way that you're used to thinking of transforming normal gendal objects, you can use boxed curve and boxed surface. Now here are some examples where we have a mirrored, translated, translated, rotated. So here's, a, here's the mirrored, here's some translated. These ones that look vertical like this are translated and rotated. So for exercise 8, we want to take the wavy object from the previous example. Check the reference documentation for box curve to see how you can add a scale in the x, y, and z axis. Let's look at the reference documentation, see how you would look that up. Go to package documentation, mission home, and in the surface package, surface and solids facility for boxed curve or boxed surface. And see there are optional inputs for scale, scale x, scale y, and scale z. The scale is a single number that will scale in all directions. If you want to do individual scaling in x, y, and z, you have scale x, scale y, scale z. So you can actually stretch these things along different axes. So in the exercise, we're asking you to scale by a factor of 2 in x, y, and z, respectively. So you'll add three child objects to the example. The first one, you'll scale it by a factor of 2 in x. second one, you'll scale with a y. The third one, you'll scale with a z. And then check how that affects the total length. 